Coming up next on week three of MASL Primetime, it was time to drop the championship banner in Milwaukee, but it was Florida with the mic drop as they pulled off a shocker. Florida's Gordy Gerson joins us via Skype to discuss his squad's play so far. And in our spotlight, we look at the spectacular play of Utica City FC since coming into the league last year and just how much this city loves its new team. All coming up next on MASL Primetime. This is MASL Prime Time. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Alex Bastjevansky, and wow, time flies. We're already through week three of play now with uh, the holidays staring us right in the face. Peace on earth, goodwill towards all. However, one team that hasn't been too charitable towards uh, the opposition so far has been the Monterey Flash. Quite the opposite, in fact. The Mexican squad appears to be bent on playing the role of Scrooge to the rest of the MASL. Heading into week three, the Flash sported a pristine 3-0 record, having racked up a ridiculous 36 goals in the process. And they were taking on the Mesquite Outlaws last week. And to their credit, the first-year franchise refused to be intimidated by the powerful Flash. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Mitre. Miter, the official soccer ball of the MASL. The Monterey has bullied its opposition so far this year, but the Outlaws stayed close all game. Another great crowd at the Mesquite Arena to check out their new expansion side, and we pick it up in the second half of play. Uh, Monterey leading 2-1 when Anthony Powell rocks it top shelf to knock things up at two apiece, and the big crowd was loving what they were seeing. In the fourth quarter, though, the Outlaws cough it right up, and the Flash will burn you every time you do that. Too much talent on this squad. Eric Rosas smacks it past Eduardo Cortez, and Monterey uh, leads the contest once again. So it was up to Diego Reynoso to shut the door for the Flash. That is exactly what he did. Massive stop there on the breakaway, and he gets by with a little help from his friends. Sing it with me. Both of them, insane. Off both goalposts, the goalie's best friend, and then he makes the follow-up save. So close yet so far. Outlaws fans were losing it. Their squad doesn't quite pull it off on this day, but they earn some massive respect in the process as the first-year team hangs with Monterey all the way and nearly pulls off the upset. It was the home opener for the reigning MASL champion, Milwaukee Wave. They were set to party in Brew City. Captain Ian Bennett talking to the fans before the game, getting them going. But I need everybody to stand up and take a look over here. Drop the banner, baby! Let's go! Let's go! We're here! We're the champs! Yeah, they are the champs, and they look like it early on. 7.50 in, Chad Vandergriff, the one-timer, past Hugo Silva. Uh, one nothing for the home squad, but this is a whole different Tropics team this year. Joey Tavernisi, the gorgeous bank pass to Antonio Manfoot. And this is some pretty, pretty stuff. Tropics tying it up 1-1. Uh, you'll see this one again in the plays of the week, though. Willem Vega smoking it past Silva putting the boys in black up to one zero chance for the goalie on that one. Second half of play, the Tropics would hit back again. Rafael Diaz doing what he can between the sticks. One chance too many though. Rafa Alves tickles the twine to tie it up once again. Five minutes later though, they love that bank pass to the Tropics and that is the arena game. Using those boards, Zach Reggett, last season's Rookie of the Year, gives FLA its first lead. Back and forth they went. Alex Bradley down the left side, hammers the pass from Luan Oliveira, tying it up at three apiece. Late in the third queue, Guilherme Vega just chilling at the side of the net, tips it home, 
and the champs were up 4-3 after 45 minutes. But Florida saved its best for last. Victor Pereiras stymied by Diaz. Ricardo Carvalho cleaning up the garbage to tie it. They were off to overtime. Look at the gorgeous backdoor pass by Ricardino Sobrera to Dos Santos. And that is the winner as Florida spoils Milwaukee's home opener. And they send a message loud and clear to the MASL. They will be a force to be reckoned with this season. 5-4 Tropics, your final. Let's take a look at your points leaders. Edgar Gonzalez continuing to lead the way from the Monterey Flash. Uh, Vinny Dentis making a move though. Great week uh, from the Baltimore Blast forward. Dom Francis of Harrisburg. Christian Segura of Utica City. Miguel Vaca and Adrian Gutierrez of the Cal Express to round it up. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. Before last season, the Syracuse Silver Knights relocated roughly 55 miles down the I-90 to Utica. And right from the opening kickoff, Utica City FC was a massive hit both on and off the pitch. Now, UC FC made the playoffs in its first season and they look to build on that success this year. We spend two minutes with Utica City now and this week's MASL Team Spotlight. Simply put, last season, the city of Utica fell in love with its new soccer team. UCFC took the MASL by storm, making it to the conference semifinals and finishing third in league attendance in the process. Our first season in Utica was amazing. Um, we were supported by the community. Um, the, the fans really sparked uh, an interest when we came in and, and have you know, shown up for every game and, and are loud and are rowdy and it, it really makes that place rocking, so it's a fun place to play. Utica City played an exciting, high-octane brand of soccer. Bo Yellowvats notched 32 points and he's their top returning scorer from last year. Bo's a big, strong target forward, you know. Um, he's, he can hold the ball uh, up against probably any defender in the league, uh, and it helps that he's probably training against one of the best in Darren Toby. And he's got good foot skills in order to kind of wiggle out of tight situations. He, he's got good vision with the ball, so when he receives it, he kind of already knows what he wants to do with it. Utica has added significant firepower this season. Moises Gonzalez from the RGV Barracudas and Kristen Segura from San Diego who's been lighting it up through three weeks of play. I think Christian's a great player. He looks like he's just having fun when he's playing. Like he's always playing with a smile on his face and he's crafty, he's creative. Uh, you never kind of know what he's gonna do. So again, it's unpredictable in that sense. As much as they are an offensive juggernaut, standout goalkeeper Andrew Coughlin feels UCFC is just as good on the defensive side of the ball with a wealth of talent helping him out. Honestly, defensively, I think we're pretty strong. Uh, you look at our, our core group of defenders, and I think you see a lot of big-time players in that. Uh, Jake Schindler, Darren Toby, uh, Sainin Obasi. Uh, but I think we also added a little bit more creativity and a little bit more youth to the side, which um, kind of helps us going forward, keeps the energy level high during the game, and, and I think can, can cause a lot of problems for teams uh, when, when we attack. So Andrew and his boys were in action versus Harrisburg in week three. This was a dandy and heated. 10.42 win. Jake Schindler getting things started. One zip, Utica City. A penalty kick for Dom Francis here. He makes no mistake. And it's all tied up 1-1. Second half with a score 2-1 UCFC. Coughlin, uncharacteristically coughing it up right to Francis. He had a huge weekend, 2-2. Fourth quarter now, Onewa Obasi with these sweet moves and the sublime finish, Roof Daddy. Uh, and then Ricardo De Queros Dieguez. I'm glad he only scored once because that's a tongue twister, but he made it count. What a beauty. Harrisburg made it a one goal game late in the dying seconds, it got crazy. A uh, bit of scrapping along the boards. Both benches ended up clearing. We'll talk more about that later. Utica takes it 4-3. Uh, this one was much calmer for Harrisburg, hosting the Lancers, and uh, Dominic Francis has been a superstar for the Heat this season. He had a monster weekend. Uh, with the score 1-0, he jacks the free kick in. 2-0, 
for the Heat. A minute later, William Eske, too much time and space. He makes it three for Harrisburg. Second quarter, down four nothing. The Lancers finally strike. Anthony Rosano pulls them to within three. Fourth quarter, Mr. Francis really taking over. This is the hat trick. Gorgeous shot. 7-1 final. Francis likes the way his team is playing, but knows they've got to keep upping their game as the season goes on. Things are looking good the way we're playing. I, I, don't, I don't think there's too many bad things going, going wrong at the minute, but we can't just sit back and say, hey, we, we've got to take a start. We've got to improve from here. We've, we've got to keep getting better every game and every practice. Okay, the St. Louis ambush hosting the Milwaukee Wave. First quarter, Rafael Diaz with the case of the butter fingers here as he just never manages to see get control of it, take another look. Uh, as uh, Dudica Carvalho taking full advantage and, and it goes one nothing for St. Lou. Stayed that way until the second half actually, 1-1 at this point. Luan Oliveira picking Pepe Jonquera's pocket, he makes it 2-1, Milwaukee, and then Ian Bennett, the softest of touches, floating it just under the bar, the Canadian assassin making it 3-1. Fourth quarter, Max Ferdinand one times the offering into the back of the cage. And then late in the fourth, this looks like the exact same play, like an instant replay, but this time the nice little flick right there by Bennett. And it's Ferdinand again with the finish. 6-1 final. MASL goal leaders through three weeks of play, and it continues to be Edgar Gonzalez leading the way with 11. Uh, Two-way tie for second, Dom Francis and Vinny Dantas of the Baltimore Blast. Uh, Christian Segura with six from UCFC, and then uh, two members of the Flash, Miguel Vaca and Brian Aguilar to round out your top scores through three weeks. Hey, welcome back to MASL Primetime. You know, without a doubt, the most uh, eye-opening result of the young MASL season so far took place last, last weekend uh, when the Florida Tropics dropped the defending champion Milwaukee Wave on the road, no less. So it goes without saying that Tropics midfielder Gordy Gerson is in a good mood today, and he joins me now via Skype. Uh, Gordy, welcome to the show. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Well, we got to start off with uh, your comments about the big win. You go into the Lions' den, uh, facing down the defending Ron Newman Cup champs, 4,500 strong on hand, backing the hometown wave. And you guys come out uh, with the 5-4 win. Uh, what were the keys to success? Uh, I mean, we kind of we stuck to our own game plan for most of the game. I was, uh, you know, unfortunately, I was back home watching the game on the TV, but... To me, the way we played was we were we were composed throughout the four quarters, and we played like an actual team. When one guy made a mistake, four others were there to back him up, and you know the results showed. In my opinion, I mean, we could have had a few more opportunities that we put away, but uh, anytime you go into Milwaukee and you come out with a win, you know you're you're definitely happy, especially with them being 21 and three last season. They're a, they're a powerhouse, no question about it. Huge win for you guys, leading the way through three weeks. Uh, for you is Ricardo Carvalho, who came to the team after playing in Harrisburg last year. Uh, talk about Ricardo and what he's brought to the team. Uh, Ricardo's a great player, and, you know, he's fun to be around. He's always smiling, laughing, and the guys love him on the team as a person and as a player. Uh, he could play target. He could play second forward. He's, you know, he's been around the mix for us, and it's just huge to have players like that that can play any position and still be able to get the job done. Yeah, you've tallied 16 goals through three games, which is fourth highest in the East. I mean, not a massive amount, but what really sticks out when we look at your, your stats is just the balance. Three guys are tied with uh, three goals each right now. Uh, Carvalho was one, Zach Reggett, and uh, Matt Clare, the other two. Uh, Joey Tavernese has three assists. Uh, just tell us about the balance and scoring on this squad. Oh, it's, it's awesome to have. It's great knowing, you know, when you're not on the field, someone else is there doing, you know, just as much as you'd be able to do. Uh, getting, you know, scoring 16 goals in three games, that's that's great. But looking at the other side of it, it's just three wins. That's all that matters to us is we made sure that at the end of each game, we, we came up on top. Yeah, and finally, Gordy, you've had to uh, miss the last two games due to injury. Uh, that you've been out with, unfortunately. And uh, so, two-part question here. First, what's your timeline for return? You mentioned you had to watch the game, unfortunately, from back home in Milwaukee. But And secondly, uh, you signed as a free agent with Florida after playing for in-state rival Orlando 
Last season, how good did it feel to beat your old team twice in two weeks? Uh, I mean, the kind of person that I am, it's I, I tell myself I'm playing the next game every single day. So it doesn't matter what I tell myself. You know, my body's going to heal the way it needs to heal. My plan is to play the next game, which is our home opener this Saturday. Uh, you know, hopefully my body will let that happen. On top of that, winning two games against Orlando to me is, I mean, it's great. Um, it's making me feel like I made the right move to to Florida and show to myself and also to the league that, you know, I, I came to a serious team who's looking to win. And uh, the first thing on the mind is playoffs. And once you get there, anything can happen. And that's our goal. Yeah, you know what? You guys are doing tremendous so far. And is this what you expected when you came here? When you looked at this lineup, were you thinking to yourself that you guys had a legitimate shot to win the entire thing? Obviously, you would have had tremendous confidence in coming into the situation. But is this what you expected this early in the season for the team to be playing this well? Uh, you know, I, I expect the results right away. Um, to me, our first game against Orlando, we didn't play our best. I mean, it was our first game on a big field. And, uh, you know, after a long preseason, we train on a smaller field. It's 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 just nice to know that we're no matter what we're going to make sure that we get the result we're going to do what we can to make sure that happens well gordy i appreciate you taking the time and we're looking forward to uh, seeing you well you're obviously aching to get back in the lineup but we're looking forward to seeing you back in the lineup as well uh thanks so much for taking the time today and we'll chat with you later on thanks for having me have a good one yeah gordy's boys just had an outstanding weekend here's the game against orlando just a buck 21 in ricardino sobrera Hammers it in to make it one zip. Tropics, the Sea Wolves would tie it, and then Mike Silva gets his second of the day to put the home squad up 2 1. Second quarter, Guillermo dos Santos gets chopped down, no question about it. So it's a penalty kick. Victor Pereira takes it and makes no mistake. 2 2 soccer game back the other way. Richard Sherman find some daylight to make it 3-2. All Florida from that point on though. Zach Riggett, spinorama shot, 3-3. Soon after, it's Riggett again, crushing it to make it 4-3 Tropics. Second half, Ricardo Carvalho, smooth, smooth, smooth this guy. The 1v1 skills, outstanding. 5-3, down 8-4, Orlando adds a late one. Odane Sinclair on the doorstep. And it goes, that's as close as they would get though as the Tropics take down their in-state rivals by an eight to five count. Let's check out the goalie leaders so far in the MASL. Goals against average, William Banahaney from the Harrisburg Heat leading the way, followed by Diego Reynoso, Rafa Diaz, uh, Andrew Coughlin of UCFC, Jesus Molina also of the Harrisburg Heat, and Hugo Silva to round out your goaltending leaders. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. You know, they say all good things must come to an end, but don't tell the Baltimore Blast that Milwaukee shattered their hopes and dreams in the Eastern Final. Now, it's a loss that still stings more than half a year later, and the Blast have begun this season on a mission to reclaim the championship trophy they believe is rightfully theirs. They took a one-on-one record into their matchup with Orlando last weekend. Game highlights in this segment are brought to you by Sports Resource Group, proud partner of the MASL, SRG, building walls that bring us together. And Baltimore was a hungry bunch last weekend. Orlando paid the price, unfortunately. Now, Vinny Dantas was a one-man wrecking crew he gets the blast going less than a minute in. Nice little touch to make it one zip. And then it's Mohamed Endai poking it past the keeper right there to make it two. And they were relentless. Juan Pereira, top shelf uh, to make it three for the blast. Second quarter, last up 5-0 at this point. Tony Donatelli to Sam Guernsey for the tally. And then a little something extra for the crowd in Baltimore afterwards. Keeper Peter Sliwa under fire all game. Great job right there though to deny Juan Pereira. The Sea Wolves do tally once in the first half. Mario Alvarez, beautiful one-timer, but they still had a long road back. Second half down 10-2. Eduardo Cruz hammers it home to make it 10-3, but Vinny Dantas just too much, too often. That was his fifth of the day and his nicest, the Blast running away with it. 14-5 final. Sonora versus Dallas. Now this was another 
one side of the fair. Although the sidekicks actually draw first blood. Victor Almadariz knocks it home to make it one nothing. Big D. The Soles do respond though. Gustavo Rosales at the side of the net draws the home squad level. We get some loving from the fans afterwards. Second quarter with Sonora leading 2-1. Ricardino Cavalcante squeezes it through to uh, knock things up at two apiece. Sonora just too much on this day though. Enrique Canez from a tough angle uh, rips it past the keeper to make it 3-2. And then Javier Barreras one times the deflection in and it's 4-2 Solas at that point and it's the only the uh, tip of the iceberg. Nice passing here by Sonora. And watch it through the legs. Ooh. Manuel Aragon taking the backdoor feed and depositing. And with the score 5-3, it's Barreras again. Another nice one. Bar down. That made it 6-3. And the Solas would continue the assault right to the end. As they uh, managed to drop the Dallas sidekicks by a 13-5 count. Okay, let's go to the vaults. A 1985 MISL tilt between the Kansas City Comets and the San Diego Soccers. 12,000 on hand in KC, great crowd. The Soccers were actually down 3-1 when Branco Sagoda takes over. He gets the comeback going and then notches the OT winner for San Diego in a classic game going back 34 years now. Where's the time go? Let's see who made the naughty list this week. Two suspensions, and it all stems from this. I went to a soccer game, and a hockey game broke out. Fans in Utica must have been questioning for a moment if they were at a Utica Stars AHL game or a UCFC contest. The bench is clearing. David Meller of Harrisburg gets one game for being first off the bench, as does James Tugba of UCFC. Quite the brouhaha. Eventually, cooler heads did prevail, but that's some old school fun. Right there. Okay, your team of the week for week number three. Uh, Vinny Dantas of the Baltimore Blast, Zach Riggett, Tony Donatelli, uh, Dom Francis, Alex Cacheres, and Rafa Diaz. And our primetime player. Oh, it was tough, but we had to go with Vinny Dantas of the Baltimore Blast. There were some great performances by others this week. Dominic Francis was huge as well, but in just one game, Dantas had six points. Five of those points were goals, and he absolutely shredded the Floridians. Uh, through three weeks, Dantas is second in league scoring with 10 points. The plays of the week, and Dantas is involved. Number five, here he is against Orlando, turning his man inside out and putting it away. Uh, number four, look at the sweet pass off the boards uh, to Dom Francis who tucks it just under the bar. Number three, another great boards pass here. Joey Tavernisi back for Antonio Manfoot. Uh, great feed and super finish. And number two, Milwaukee's Guilherme Vega with murderous intent behind that shot. Barred down against Florida, very nice. Number one though, Ricardo Diegues. Oh, the footwork, the spin shot, so smooth. That is our prime time play of the week. And that's going to wrap things up for today. But just a reminder, MASLsoccer.com is your home base for all things in the major arena soccer league. And there's all kinds of other social media to keep you up to date as well. Thank you so much for watching MASL Primetime. We'll see you next week.